So hi, my name is Gina Witherow. I'm the director of Donegal English Language School. We are a family business and we were established 30 years ago. And we specialize in English and adventure packages. We also offer adult programs as well, but our main programs generally are the English and adventure packages. And um, so I, uh, Peter, thank you for including me in this uh, presentation. I really appreciate it. Um, I looked at your questions and I suppose one of the questions was, what challenges have we faced? Um, I think one of the biggest ones was the limited time that we had to prepare. We had, I think we were given six hours notice to close our doors. Um, so what we were doing is we were looking at the third level education and what they were doing. And we had a few days where we thought that we were going to have to go online and we started to do test runs of uh, teaching online because some of my teachers had no experience in online teaching. Uh, we started looking at the different software, etc. cetera. Um, but we were inexperienced, to be honest. Uh, another th challenge we had was initial resistance from students. We were all thrown into the deep end uh, ourselves. We didn't know what was going on, but also with the students. I mean, it was hard enough for us and we're in our own country. So you can understand from their end, if they're uh, you know, from Brazil or Colombia and they're here and they just don't know what's going on. So there was a bit of resistance there. There was so many unknowns was another major issue. When were we going to get to open again? How strong was this virus? There was just, an unknown and limited answers at every corner that we turned. And I think the immediate one that we had an issue with was the loss of personal connection. Because one of the reasons why students choose Dells is because of that personal connection that we have with them. Um, we're there on the first day to meet them, bring them into the class. We have a cup of tea and a biscuit with them at break time and every, all of that was lost you know, within a few hours. So they were some of the main challenges that we had. And how we responded to them was once we got over the shock of it all, we started to reevaluate everything from how we were teaching, our goals, our health and safety, everything, even down to rules in the classroom, you know, about having your camera on or, uh, you know, have patience if somebody has connection issues. They were just, it was, everything had to be reevaluated. And um, I think one of the biggest ones was communication. We kept that open door communication, albeit in a, a different context. You know, we had, regular online meetings with the students. We already had a WhatsApp group. You know, we're not, we're a small school. So, you know, we always have a maximum of 50 adults. And um, so, you know, we can do that, but we then introduced a uh, classroom WhatsApp groups. So there's that constant um, opportunity to connect with somebody and to be reassured. Um, support was a really big one. Uh, we supported ourselves as a team because we were all thrown into the deep end. And we also, you know, we have our little WhatsApp group ourselves and, you know, a bit of crack, a few messages, a few videos, just to keep it lighthearted, but also to help each other solve problems. And we work together. Um, and then the next one that we worked on was best practice. And that's something that's continually evolving because, as I say, this is all so new for us all. And, you know, we have our documentation on best practice from the teacher's perspective with online teaching, but also the student's perspective. And we also look at, for example, there's a different websites or apps and we have documentation on that. And something that we're doing at the moment is each teacher will take two things off that list that they're not currently using in that in their classroom and they will go away and use those apps or sites and then they will report back on the pros and cons and then the other teachers can decide whether they're going to incorporate that into their classroom so it's just looking at different ways of how we can do the best that we can and offer the students the best service 
Um, and then a big one was clear documentation. Um, we looked at the customer journey from arrival um, until uh, when they're here. And we created a pre-arrival document and it covers everything from when you arrive, what documentation you need, travel, self-isolation, what you can and can't do, even down to deliveries, who does online deliveries, what takeaway companies. And the reason why we did that is students have anxiety coming anyway. You know, we all bring learning uh, anxieties with us, no matter what age we are. And I find sometimes adults more so. And it's bad enough without there being a pandemic thrown into the mix as well. So we, you know, wanted to make all everything about that easier. And then when the students are here, we created another document, a student COVID protocol. And that looks at everything what, about what you can and can't do at each level. Um, also, you know, if you have symptoms, if somebody is a close contact and you have symptoms, but we also included that, that if we are in lockdown, we've given them loads of apps and sites. So if you want to work on your creativity, on your academic aisles, on your meditation, you know, so we have a list of suggestions and sites for them uh, there. And they all really appreciate that as well. Um, feedback. So from the teacher's perspective, it's always been great. We're a small team. And they've always, you know, we're all working together and we're doing our best in a difficult situation. So, you know, they really have pulled it out of the bag and, you know, thrown themselves in at the deep end and they've been great. Initially from the students, it was, most of them were like, they knew we were trying our best. They knew that this was something out of all of our control, but at the same time, they didn't want to be online. So at the initial stages, feedback was, fine it wasn't what we were used to let's say and you know and as again we were learning by doing we didn't have two months notice to put best practice in place um so what I did here is I compared I was looking during the week of feedback kind of in those initial stages and then we did feedback last week so at the end of April's feedback beginning in May 82% of the students were enjoying the class that was 92% last week um 90 percent of the students back um end of april felt that they were getting the right support from their teacher that was 100 percent last week uh, 78 percent felt that they got enough opportunities to practice their english during class that was 89 percent last week still room for improvement but you know the thing is is that it has improved uh back you know in april uh, 81% of students thought that their English language skills were improving and that again was 89%. So again, there's still areas that we're looking at. Um, we've included, for example, in our social activity program, conversation classes, um, uh, you know, and we're looking at different ways to increase the learner experience. Um, we learned well new skills lots of new skills new sites and um, new ways of uh, teaching you know so all of that we have learned uh, I think one of the biggest things is not to take anything for granted because uh, you know we are in such a great sector and you know you're ticking along and everything's going well and then the next thing boom so definitely don't take anything for granted one that I uh, feel strongly about is that paperless classes are possible I always knew it and I was always met with resistance from the teachers as they were photocopying 50 pages but you know it is possible and this pandemic has shown that um, and even when we were back face to face, uh, there was the, the photocopiers were hardly used. And I think that's fantastic. Um, I think a big one as well is it shouldn't take a pandemic for people to work together. I, you know, I came home 14 years ago to take over the business and I've made more connections in this sector in the last nine months than I had in the whole 14 years. Um, and, you know, 
it should be that way. We should all work together. We might be competition, but we're all different profiles and sizes and we can all learn from each other. And uh, I think it's one of the positives that will come out of this is that, you know, I would like to think that people will want to work together to more and to help each other because when we come out of this, we need um, to be the leading destination in ELT. Um, we do. We will have competition. The market will be smaller. Um, so it's in all of our interest to work together to offer a more quality product. Um, and then medium to long term, I think the one thing we'll continue to work on best practice um, through internal training, external training. We will keep some elements of the online teaching. We do already when we're in face-to-face, -face, for example, with Google Classrooms, uh, with some of the apps or sites that we use online. Um, but for me, ultimately, it's all about the experience and we sell experiences. We offer experiences and people come to Donegal for the Donegal experience to go out surfing just outside us here to you know the horse ride in the nature and you know on the west coast of Ireland education tourism is vital like in the town I live in alone it's 30 percent of the overall economic contribution um, we need it. We don't have Google. We don't have LinkedIn. This is one of our main industries and it's vital. And uh, for me, I'm looking forward to welcoming students back and giving them the Donegal experience. So, yeah, that's us. That's great. Um, I, I remember you, I know from talking to you before that 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 you feel that the students I are kind of part of the community there because they're yeah. there for so long they're there for six months and so on H how has that kind of dynamic uh worked for the students like outside the classroom outside the school uh, uh in this kind of scenario well i mean you know again small town two and a half thousand people and we have like a small brazilian population and you know they work in the local hotels initially how we would do that is I'm involved in tidy towns for example so our students come out and they help us in tidy towns they volunteer in the local community center so we really look at ways of how they can get involved in the community take pride uh, in the community help with beach cleans or whatever projects are going on and like some of our students are now married uh, in the area. We have a few babies and it's, to be honest, I think it's great. I think, you know, the world is such a big place and we're just a small area on the west coast of Ireland. But, you know, we have different communities living here and they're integrated into the west coast and it makes our area more open minded, more, um, yeah, just more open. Uh, and yeah, and I, I, it's one part of what we do that I'm very proud of, to be honest. And the, like I, I, I agree with you, with you there, hundred percent. Like our, 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 our students are not like external to the the community. They, no. they become part of it. Yeah. And very often they are that kind of frontline part of it. Yes. Definitely in the jobs that they do, um, you know, when I go into Super Value in the town, there's a few of our students there and some of them that are no longer students, they're now living here full time and, you know, they go, hey, Gina, what's the crack? And it's just like, oh, how's it going? You know what I mean? It's funny to hear them with their wee Irish twangs and, and everything. But yeah, and like they do, they take on a lot of those roles um, from us in the hospitality or, you know, in the... Um, yeah, mostly actually in hospitality and retail here. But yeah, they do, they, you know, they play an important role. 